Hey there YouTube, Travis here. So we're taking a look today at the 1977 Puke Maxi N. Again, this bike has the 70cc DMP kit, bi-turbo, a couple other little goodies on it, but I've been chasing an air leak on it, and I thought I'd make this video because one of my most popular videos is checking for air leaks with the carb cleaner test. And you know, I didn't really get a chance to say everything I wanted to in that video, and mostly that it's not the end all for checking for air leaks, rather it's the first thing you do because it's a pretty easy test. So if you've ever asked for help out there on the moped forums and people suspect you have an air leak and you tell them, well I've checked for air leaks with carb cleaner and I didn't find anything, they'll tell you, no that's not good enough, you need to do a leak down test. Now those of us who have graduated from working on cars definitely understand the significance of the leak down test. But two-stroke leak down testers are expensive, and I went ahead off a design that uh, I saw from a fellow YouTuber and off of his blog post, Marty from the Casa Rollers. I'm going to put a link to both his video and his blog in the description. He's got some excellent videos. I highly recommend you check them out and give him full credit for this design. But I went ahead and made my own two-stroke leak down tester. A little crude, but bear with me. Okay, so we've got a couple components here. Um, I won't go into them in too much depth because I genuinely want you to check out uh, Marty's blog and video. He's got a full list right there, but here's a real quick rundown. Uh, this is a type of leak down tester that puts pressure into the case instead of drawing a vacuum. So you want to be really careful that we don't uh, put too much pressure in there, otherwise we could blow out the seals. But anyway, uh, that starts with the bike pump, which goes through some fittings. Uh, I just got from the plumbing section of my hardware store. Uh, I got a little PSI gauge right here. And uh, if you're lucky, you want to get a gauge that uh, reads a little bit lower. Uh, ideally, something that goes up to 30 PSI or something like that. I checked all. In my area, I just have the big box uh, hardware stores, the corporate ones. And I even checked my local plumbing supply, and 100 PSI was the smallest they had. So that'll, that'll have to do. It is accurate enough. Uh, and then uh, some radiator hose that goes into a old 12 bing intake that I have kicking around. Okay, so real quick, before you get ahead of yourself, uh, make sure you actually, you know, kind of do a little simple pressure test of your homemade leak down tester itself. Putting your thumb over one end and uh, kind of putting about 10 psi in there and then just spraying along the seams with uh, your soapy water mixture. Um, You'll get poor readings on your gauge, surprise, surprise, if it has leaks of its own. I'm redoing connection right here. Uh, I just wrapped the plumber's tape the wrong way so that when I screwed the fitting on, it kind of uh, all bundled up instead of going on nice and clean. Also, to block up the exhaust, uh, I just took an old Pook stock pipe, hacked it, uh, got some RTV and a plug that I carved down to fit, and we also have... Uh, what we're going to be testing with, which is just a mix of dish soap and water into a cheap spray bottle. Anyway, uh, you know, best way to do this uh, is to really to drop the engine. That way uh, you can check, see if you've got any leaks uh, along the case as we go around it. And uh, I want to be really thorough, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, and so before I fully take off the motor, I'm going to go ahead and install my little plug down here. Again, just a stock pook pipe with an RTV'd up plug in the bottom of it uh, to seal up that bottom. Alright, got the motor off this bike once again. Okay, so it's hooked up. Uh, sorry, you can't see the pressure gauge very well, but uh, what we want here is uh, keep it under 10 PSI. I aim for 7 PSI to put in uh, again go over 10, risk damaging the seals, uh, and once I do that I'm going to go around and spray with that dish soap water mixture right there and uh, we'll see if we've got any leaks. I've got some culprits in my mind, I'm thinking the spark plug threads, possibly at the intake, uh, maybe the exhaust, and I just want to spray around the case and, and see where it is, but I think this first go around I think we're going to see that pressure drop pretty quick. On uh, Marty's video, he says it should hold for at least a minute. So, let's see what happens. Got a pretty big intake leak right there. Okay. So this is really bad. Um, again, I'm looking at that 10 PSI right there. So get one. 
to look how quickly it drops. That uh, that is not normal. So obviously I got a big old intake leak there, but uh, I sprayed everywhere else, and that's the only one I saw. So hopefully this might actually be an easy fix. Uh, when you're spraying around your engine, you want to spray around obviously the normal spots, like just with checking the carb cleaner, head gasket, base gasket, intake. Um, obviously, there's no real carb to spray right here. Uh, underside on the exhaust, you can hit it right there at the back of the flange. Uh, go around the engine case. Uh, again, we used our good tack and seal when we sealed it up, which is resistant to oil and gas, so that uh, helps that. And of course, ta uh, torquing all the screws in the bottom of the spec. Um, if you want to be really ambitious, you could take off your stator and get to your stator side seal right there. Of course, the usual telltale giveaways if that seal has failed uh, will be kind of goopy sludge around it. And mine looked pretty good last time I had this off. And then uh, also, big one, your spark plug threads. And this spark plug, or any spark plug I try and put in there, it's kind of hard to turn and kind of grimy. And even after I cleaned up the threads as best I could, I'm sure I'd have a leak there, but I don't. I'm using a trail tech temperature gauge and so of course I take the washer off the spark plug and use the uh, copper sensor there as my washer. So that's how you do a leak down test on a two stroke and uh, that's my uh, homemade two stroke leak down tester there again based off uh, Marty's design so I suppose I could have figured all that out without taking the engine off the bike but I really wanted to cover all my bases and I really wanted to check that case and so if that's really my only air leak well that's a little embarrassing but be an easy fix. Um, that's torqued to spec with a brand new gasket um, and those of you with a keen eye will notice I've got one stud and one bolt in there that's just because that's all I got right now that could be part of my problem. Um, I prefer studs over bolts because uh, the stud will strip out and the nut will strip out uh, before the threads inside the cylinder do so that's kind of a nice thing but anyway that's a quick side so I'm going to throw this back together um, I'm going to put some uh, moto seal again resistant to oil and gas see if I can get a seal there and see if we'll be back in business okay so it's been 24 hours I used some of that moto seal right there uh, where the intake meets the cylinder, and let's see if we still have that enormous air leak there. Okay, the YouTube, well, that air leak is all sealed up. The motor is back on the bike, and I am pretty ready to get riding again. Well, hope you enjoyed that presentation and getting to see the homemade two stroke leak down tester. Until next time.